when we are mindful that we are in a time of Lent in preparation for the suffering and death of Jesus and then his glorious resurrection. Let us begin with our litany. The God of healing, hope, and wholeness be with you all. The Son of Righteousness fill you with hope and peace. The Spirit of Holiness and Resurrection stir within you. Let us pray. Holy God of all creation, every breeze, tide, and tectonic shift is known to you. All times and places are held within your infinite expanse of grace. Guide us in your mercy to perceive our place of rest in your faithfulness, which you have revealed to all through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord. To him, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us join in singing our Lenten song. This evening is from the Gospel of Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No. I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O God, we call. O God, we call. From deep inside we yearn. From deep inside we yearn. From deep inside we yearn for you. Time can be such a funny thing. Experienced as, as a gift or at other times experienced as a curse. Now, how many of us didn't experience growing up being riders in the back seat of the car where our destination was so far out in the distance that that car ride to get there was just almost unbearable a curse upon us keep asking the parents in the front seat when are we going to get there how long till we get there only to be shushed 
and told not to pester your brother or sister who is sitting next to you in the back seat. Time can seem like such a curse. On the flip side, think about growing up, those parties that you were invited to, those times of celebration and joy where it just flew by this thing we call time. It, you got there and all of a sudden it was over and you don't have any idea how those seconds, minutes, or hours passed so quickly. It's such a gift. Fleeting, it seemed like. And yet you wouldn't have traded the experience for anything. I guess there are some times that the same event can seem like both the time there a curse or a blessing, a gift. I remember my very first seventh grade dance. I don't know how many of you went to dances in the seventh grade, but in my hometown, that was like the first one you were invited to. So in that late September Friday night, we gathered at Astoria Middle School, and there was such expectation all week long amongst the seventh graders. What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What? What is it going to be this experience we've never had before? We all rushed in the doors as they opened us seventh graders. Balloons hung from the ceiling and streamers all over. And because it was in the mid to late 1970s, a disco ball there hung in the middle of our cafeteria, twirling around with lights flashing everywhere. The excitement that we all rushed in with soon turned to despair and then dread because no one dared dance. It's almost like someone had cast a, a dense fog over the excitement and it all sort of went away. Guys were hanging out along the walls with their hands in their pockets and and Folks were kind of staring at one another, but not really making eye contact, just wondering if anyone dared go out and be the first. The minutes rugged by slowly. People started looking at the clock on the wall, wondering, when is this torture going to end? And then there was that one person. Paul, one of my classmates. Paul kept looking up at the wall, at the clock, and looking around at everyone, and you could tell that something was stirring inside of him, something like, this is not right, this is not what we're here for. And so Paul dashed out into the middle of the dance floor under the disco ball and just let it go. He looked like a seventh grade John Travolta out there was amazing. And then he ran around to people who were standing on the edges of our cafeteria and physically tried to drag them out there with him. And at first, no one did. But then in ones and twos, people began to come out. And, and it was almost like ice melted off of them. And those initial sort of very stiff and uncoordinated movements all of a sudden, the music captured people, and they felt free, and they danced. And by the end of the evening, no one was looking at the clock. Everyone was going crazy. It was just one giant mass dancing on the floor, and poof, it was all over way too soon. One evening... Time a gift, time a curse. What was the difference? Next day, or I guess the next school day, early in the week, Paul was talking about what led him out there. And he said something strange for a seventh grader. He just said, 
I had helped plan this, and I could see it in my mind what this would be. And in my mind, it was happening, but no one was participating. I said, I didn't create it. I just went out there and lived it. I think there's something to that. Paul was able to see and live something that was always there. Something that just took a nudge for the rest of us to join in on. I think it's sort of like what Jesus tried to do in and through his ministry. He he tried to point out to people that God has always had this huge, wonderful party going on. And Jesus just could see it. And he could feel it. And he was living it. And he just invited other people to come and join into it. He didn't create it. But he could see it. And wanted everyone else to also. Our gospel reading for this evening also talks about time. About a fig tree uh, that the owner of the vineyard uh, had planted at, for three years was not bearing any fruit. And this amazing gardener who could see what was really going on around it in the vineyard just need time and care and a vision to see what it could be. A gardener, much like Paul and maybe even Jesus, had this unique ability to see beyond the sort of dead and deafening and, and down times of life into what's really happening in God's heart poured out among us. A feast, a festival of hospitality and welcome, a giant party going on. Give it another year. You'll see. In this sense, the time of all of our lives is pure gift. Along with an invitation to look and see what's really happening and trust that word from the gardener. Great things are happening around us. Let's live into it. Let's tend to it. Invite others to be a part of it. And as we do, we begin to sense this expansion of God's amazing gift-giving, party-throwing. See, repentance or turning is not about getting down on ourselves or feeling bad about ourselves. So much of people's understanding of repentance is you've got to figure out what to feel bad about and then turn away from it. No, it's exactly the opposite. Repentance is being able to see the amazing gifts that God has given and simply turning toward them and living into them. So for all those gardeners out there, or Pauls, or anyone else who has the gift of being able to see what's really true, I give thanks for you. And may your spirit fill our spirit now and always. Amen. We continue our service this evening with song.
visit you when crosses come in trying days. Trust then in God's unchanging love, build on the rock that will not move. The Lord our restless hearts is holding in peace and quietness content. We rest in God's good will unfolding what wisdom from on high has sent. God who has chosen us by grace knows very well the fears we face. We have just sung together, we rest in God's good will unfolding. And so now we keep a time of silence waiting for God to reach into our lives wherever we are and nourish us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our creator and protector, you call us to illumine the world with your breath of life. Move within us that our hearts and our homes would be attentive to your abundant blessing. Healing God, hear our prayer. In your mercy, answer us. In our coming and in our going, enable us to reveal your peace to our weary world. Healing God, hear our prayer. In your mercy, answer us. In our lives and in our believing, enable us to love as we have been loved. Forgive as we have been forgiven. Healing God, hear our prayer. In your mercy, answer us. At our end and in all our new beginnings, give us wisdom to receive your care with gladness. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing our final song. the healer we have come to pray for help to plead for friends how can we fail to be restored when reached by love that never ends from every ailment flesh and Deepest. 
worst need in conflicts that destroy our health we recognize the world's disease our common life declares our ills is there no cure oh christ for thee Grant that we all made one in faith in your community may find the wholeness that enriching us shall reach the whole of humankind. Go in peace. The spirit of healing goes with you. Thanks be to God.